Hey everyone, LP here. Last month, I got invited to speak at the Kentucky Sustainable uh, Living and Homesteading and Preparedness Festival. It's There's too many words. And uh, while I was there, I got invited to go to the, uh, the Caleb House uh, benefit dinner. And uh, they were auctioning off some pretty cool stuff. So I grabbed this. Yes, yes. I grabbed this. I was a little surprised. I actually paid through the nose for it. So you're welcome, Bear. Anyway, uh, so I get it home, I start looking at it, and I was like, wait a minute, this, I really would, maybe I need to order the green case, because all my stuff's in green, right? And I started looking at it closer and closer and closer, and I noticed something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you with a quick side-by-side, -side, no pun intended. Let's go ahead and take a look. This is the BearFact 3.0. Made in America, guaranteed forever, exceeds military specification. 57 lives saved to date on four continents with all branches of the U.S. Armed Forces electively. I'll show you what's in it. Ballistic nylon on the outside, Molly compatible PALS webbing, gives you uh, your portability and your durability. Inside you have your capability. Most first aid kits stay stuck to your body, which I absolutely hate because I need the stuff out where I can get at it when I need it. So you pop this open, pull the red handle, the inner comes out. This is designed that it can be opened with one hand if needed because we've had three people's lives who have been saved who are missing one of their hands. Explosives, mechanical, amp mechanical amputations, etc. Pop this open. I've got everything I need right here to work the March algorithm, massive bleeding, airway, respiratory, circulation, head injury, hypothermia, everything else. I've got a tourniquet, gloves, because if it's wet and not yours, don't touch it, medical tape, six inch North American Rescue Emergency Trauma Bandage. Then in the back we have what we call the stack. In the stack, this is gonna be your uh, airway. So I've got shears, I've got five by nine gauze pads, I've got a nasopharyngeal airway. I also have in the back burn tech dressing. And uh, so this is for burns and one vented and one non-vented chest seal for penetrations to the pleural space, like the box in between your neck and your navel, 360 degrees around. In the bottom pouch, I've got quick clot for wound packing, hemostatic impregnated gauze, and then I've got our trauma pack. This has inside of it compressed gauze for wound packing or for wrapping wounds, an emergency blanket to combat hypothermia, triangle bandage, super useful for a lot of different things, rolled gauze, treating minor wounds, wound packing if needed, whatever. There is flat duct tape inside of here because it sticks to everything, including blood, sweat, and tears, an eye shield so that you can cover up an eye, uh, an eye pad, but not the kind your kid's playing on right now, two by twos, four by fours, five by nine gauze, and a handful of other things in here as well, BZK wipes, etc. So this kit was designed uh, from the ground up to be a comprehensive trauma medicine kit. It has been designed and refined with input from the United States Special Forces Operations Community, and uh, 57 lives saved to date, made in America, guaranteed forever. If you can find a better first aid kit, I'll buy it from you. They don't exist. All right, so as you can see, they're a little different. Uh, this is actually the uh, the bear min 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 min. There'll be a link in the description. Anyway, so this is not a bear fact, but I really wanted a bear fact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out a way to turn this into a bear fact. Let's go to the table. All right, so the first thing we should do is find out what is actually inside of this. You can actually download the list from Refuge Medical to see exactly what's in it. But we're just gonna tear this whole thing apart and uh, see if we can't turn this into a bare fact. Uh, what I believe is that there's enough components inside of it that are close to what's already there to basically turn it into a bare fact. So we're gonna take that off. We'll have to set that up for our personal use. We're gonna set that right there. We got everything down to the down to the patch. Down to the stinking patch. Okay, we've got our, our case. Well, basically the case is empty, so let's set that to the side. And then we've got the actual like I don't even know what we call it. It's the internal case. Uh, we've got ourselves a bandage there. 
got some eyeball stuff here and there, gauze, we've got our pen, we've got our trauma dressing, let's see we've got some we got burn shield, we got a halo chest seal, and then if we go to the back, we've got everything that's inside the Boo Boo kit. So that's pretty much just going to take up the whole darn screen is what it looks like. But uh, basically the case is empty now. So now we can actually get the list of what's inside the bear pack, and then we can start playing playing like, huh, let's get some stuff. Okay, so refuge, refuge, you know what, let's do it this way. Refuge medical train patch. Okay, there's our patch. Gen 7 tourniquet. Okay, and we got here some trauma shears. We got the 28 inch nasal pharyngeal airway. That does not exist. Sorry, I had to get a pen. Uh, let's circle that. We'll have to get our hands on one of those. Six inch emergency trauma dressing. Bada boom. All right, um, four by four burn dressing, okay. Is that what this is? What is this? Dressing, emergency, burn care. Um, four by four, perfect, okay. What else, what, what else we got here? Um, five by nine abdominal pad, three of those. I'll have to look inside here, but I don't think that's the case. So we're gonna go ahead and circle that. Triangular bandage, there's definitely no triangular bandage in here. Compressed gauze, cotton gauze slim Z fold. This is compressed gauze right here. So we're gonna put that in the we got it category. Uh, survival blanket, that does not exist. Gauze, four by four. I bet you it's, there's some in here. We're gonna have to look that up here in a second. Two by two, three inch gold rolled gauze. Okay, we got some three inch rolled gauze right there. Uh, eye shield. There's our eye shield. This is what you put over to protect the, the eyeball with once you put this on here. And eye gauze pad. There's supposed to be two of them. I'm not sure how many are inside of here. Eye pods, eye compressed ocular. Uh, so there's only one. So I, this may be tricky finding another one of these, but I'm not going to be overly concerned. I'm just going to put question mark next to that one. Underline. Flat duct tape. There's definitely no duct tape in here. Uh, one inch medical tape, boom. Permanent marker, ka Gloves, one pair, boom. Alcohol towelettes, I'm betting there's some alcohol towelettes in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and circle it anyway. And then let's go ahead and look at the list and see what we can actually get inside of there out of all this stuff. So if we go with the alcohol towelettes, let's do that first. There's supposed to be six of those puppies in here. So let's go ahead and open this up see what we got. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. These are not towelettes. These are bandages. So let's not completely take everything out of our band-aid kit, but boo-boo wipes. What do we got? Let's see what we got in here as far as boo-boo wipes. We need six alcohol towelettes. This is um, antibiotic, alcohol prep pad, alcohol, alcohol. There's four of them. Uh, antiseptic wipes. Got some burn shield stuff here. Um, sting relief, nope, that's not what we're looking for. I really like that. The burn shield, burn and scalds. You know what, um, let me throw that in the kit just cause later. But for right now, we're gonna put the alcohol pads inside of there from the original kit. I think I've got some others laying around just to try and plus it up. So we've got the, the alcohol pads, flat duct tape, flat duct tape, hmm, okay. I'm gonna go to my pile of medical stuff. Where is the flat duct tape? We're gonna put that in there because this is what I used to build my original first aid kits. So flat duct tape. Uh, where are we at here? Survival blanket. Okay. One survival blanket. Triangular bandage. One triangular bandage. Five by nine abdominal pads. I might have to look through my medical stuff to find this, but uh, let's skip over that one for right now. 28 inch near, 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 near nasal pharyngeal airway. 
I've got to go get into some stuff for that. Um, I think we're good. I think we're good. We just gotta. Where are we at here? Get my pen. We gotta. Um, uh, triangle bandage. So we need the, this one, and we need this one, and we might need some alcohol stuffs. So taking a quick look, we actually did have most of the gauze that was supposed to be in the kit. Um, what's the? Gauze, four by four times two, gauze two by two times two. So these are uh, two, those are three, that's a three inches. Where are we at here? Gauze, four by four. There's a two pack right there, boom. All right, and then we've got the two by twos. There's uh, two of those in there. Actually, we're gonna go with that. And then also the, um, um, you know, it's not gonna hurt to, I don't know, have a little extra in there maybe, maybe one thing. And then the, uh, the six inch abdominal pad. All right, so we've got uh, choo choo choo. Survivor blankets, tri tri uh, triangle bandage, five by nine, we got that. And the nearest nasal pharyngeal, nasal pharyngeal with jelly added to the pile. All right, so uh, I think we've got everything here. The only thing I could not find was uh, any quick clock, which I thought I saw the other day. So what I'm going to add instead of that is I'm gonna add this uh, Kaolin homeostatic gauze. Uh, and this stuff right here is uh, uh, hemostatic. It will stop the bleeding. So we're gonna add that to the pile. That's gonna be our backup. Then we're gonna remove all this stuffs, all these stuffs from the pile. And then we're gonna try and stuff all this stuff inside that little container, which I think can be done. All right, so first things first, the way he had it in his video was, Ah, there we go. There's our there's our container right there, and this is going to get messy, guys. Uh, and I'm trying to do everything according to memory. First of all, let's just get this out of here. Let's just get this out of this package. We don't need all this crap. Let's get it set up like we're actually going to use it one-handed. Down to the red tab. There we go. All right. Then we're going to fold it up the right way. So we can actually use this one-handed if we need to. And then we're gonna shove it in here because that's where he had it. That's what he did, the old bear guy. That's what he did, he set it up like that. And then I think he had his um, gloves over here. I think he stuck his gloves like right there. I'm gonna have to go back and review the video. We come up short here. Uh, and then he had his uh, six inch trauma dressing over here. And I think a lot of stuff he had in the stack. All right, so obviously we had the burn, we had the halo chest seals, we have the uh, trauma shears, uh, and I feel like there was something else that went back there too. Oh, there was the na nasal pharyngeal airway. We're gonna stuff that in there, and then this should all go into the back like so. And I've watched enough of his videos to see how like they pack stuff. Uh, and they really do just cram so many things into this kit. It's absolutely crazy that it all fits in there. We're gonna pop those shears in there like so. All right, and I think we're done with the stack. But once again, we're gonna go back and, and we're gonna check. We're gonna check things. And I think what we may need is we may need a bag that's big enough, I mean, this may be our bag. We're gonna, because it's no longer a boo boo kit. Um, it's now the, it's now the something. It's called, it's called the something. Uh, let's see here. Uh, obviously, we've got to put our tape back over here and never run it through. If you guys know anything about this, never run it through. Otherwise, you'll never, like, never, like, overlap it. But if you see the way this is made, you just touch the tips together, like so. Just touch the tips together. All right, so we're making progress. Let's get all the other stuffs. This is triple antibiotic ointment. Don't care about that. We're gonna put that over there. I'm gonna spin this around because I think it's gonna be easier for you guys to see what's happening when I do that. All right, so we've got all of our dry stuff. 
I'm gonna go ahead and check the video real quick just to make sure I'm getting this right. Okay, so after reviewing the video, I need to put the five by nine gauze pads uh, in, the, in the stack. Uh, so it actually goes in here. With that, trying not to crumble it all up. And it, it's, it's a little tricky to repack this, but it's not impact impossible. And it actually looks like what he does is he actually just stuffs all of this stuff in here. Also, when I retook re did the video, it's not actually um, quick clot powder. It's actually a quick clot hemostatic bandage. So I'm on point with this. So now what we have to do is just get this stuff inside of, you know, he pointed to the back. So we're going to put the duct tape in the back. And we're going to put our space blanket back behind it. We're going to try and just create all these little spaces that we can use. What is this? This is two inches. This is, we're just going to add is what we're going to do. All right, we're starting to get to bigger stuff. So let's go ahead and put that behind that. There we go. Uh, and then we've got our uh, triangle bandage. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically just how you make You can make a sling with it. You can cover somebody's eye with it. It's just a giant piece of cloth that has some pins in it. Uh, we've got our hemostatic bandage. We've got our press bandage. Let's fold this up here. Or our compressed gauze. We're starting to, it's getting tight, guys. It's getting pretty tight in here. Ah, get in there. But we've still got space. We've still got some space. So we've got our, uh, let's get our rolled gauze. Let's get those, those alcohol pads in there just cause it says we have to have one. Uh, and let's get our eye patches inside here. I think we can, I think I got some space down here. Let me pull that out. And let's put the eye patch and the eye patch cover down here on the bottom. All right. I'm sure they have some professional way of packing this, but that's just not happening today. There's our hemostatic bandage, and then our rolled gauze. And guys, I think, I think I just did it. Now we just have to pray that it actually fits inside of, uh, inside of the actual nylon container. All right, so there it is. There's our little package, just like, just like Bear made. Please fit. Otherwise, this was all for nothing. I think they probably put all this stuff inside of here before they put all the stuff on the front. All right. And it is, it is tighter. So my guess is that the bare fact has just a little bit bigger, uh, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's a larger container. All right, so now, will it close? Will it close? That's the question of, the, oh, I forgot, I gotta put my pin in there. Just in case, you gotta mark my tourniquet. Yeah, it's gonna be tight, guys. It's gonna be like really, really tight to see if this thing even closes, let alone fits, because it is so, so overly packed. Try not to do anything crazy here. Uh, but I gotta get the the Velcro to attach, and we've got to the point where I may not be able to attach the Velcro and just shove it into the bear fac. So what I didn't want to do is do a cutaway of this so that you could see how difficult it was just to get it inside of the package insanely tight I had to fight with it over and over and over pressing it against my body and just trying to make it so that it would fit inside of this package I knew I felt that it would all fit inside so I just kept pressing and this went on for a good two or three minutes which is the reason for the time lapse you're seeing now that might have actually worked I'm just gonna continue to push Oh, all right, guys. So it's all in there. And let's see. That's not well. That's the that's the retaining piece. Let's push you back in there. I thought you were the top. All right, here we go. 
Here's the flap. Will the flap close? Will the flap close? I need to use two points of contact here, or three points. It's so close. All right, I could probably get this down like another half an inch, but the truth be told, the only thing left to do is that. And now you have a Bearfax 3.0. It's just that easy. All right, let's talk about it. So, learned a few things, guys. Um, and uh, yeah, things are back on the outside. And here's why. What I found out was is that after I shoved everything inside this little container, I could jam it all in there. But if I ever had to use it, I would. It would. It would be a, a an unbelievable task to get it out. It would pop open, no problem. But it would just be this unbelievable task uh, in an emergency situation that I would not want to have to face. So what I found was is that if I just go back to the original design and. Uh, of the the minimal mini, miniest minimalist or whatever it is uh it looks exactly like this okay uh and putting the tourniquet on the outside as well as the trauma shears and then i also reorganize the inside following the march algorithm check my work anyway um so uh i let me throw a picture up here for you so you can see what I did. And basically what I did is that that allowed me, getting that, that tourniquet out of there, allowed me to have more room for the compressed bandages as well as the hemostatic bandages. Uh, uh, the, uh, in this picture, I did uh, actually did go back and uh, undo the paper that is on top of the gloves and got those shoved inside of there. Uh, and I made uh, pulling um, some of the... Um, Pulling those bandages out of the plastic bag that's in the in the front flap gave me even more room to be able to close it. So as you can see, it does close up quite easily. It's all within it's all within functional parameters. But I would not recommend you ever try doing this yourself. And the reason is is because I just spent an hour of my life trying to turn one thing into another, and it didn't actually work. I mean, I got a bear fact. It's this is a bear fact now, guys. Uh, but uh, it's not everything's not inside of it because the bear fact pouch is clearly larger uh, and um, the flap or the, the actual internal container is much larger as well. Um, well, I won't say much. I'll say some, some anyway. I don't want to be critiquing bear stuff because these it's still the best in the world. It's that easy. It's that easy. Uh, now, what I will do is I'll leave some links below to the different products that I used uh, as well as the ones that I added to it. Um, Either way, just go buy a bear fat, guys. Just go buy a bear fat. It's that easy. And um, uh, Refuge Medical, uh, if you want to send me a green bear fat case, that would be super duper. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Until the next time, stay safe. Have a great day, and I shall see you when I see you. Bye-bye.